Well, good morning and welcome to Sun Up. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Well, rain and wet weather found its way to Oklahoma this week, slowing down the 2010 weed harvest. We're normally about 45 to 50 percent done with harvest by this time. This year, we're about 5 percent behind that. So we thought, why not head down to our local elevator, who's not too busy this week, and talk to Kim Anderson about grading grain. Come on in. Well, Kim, it's good to find you outside of our typical market meeting. Well, yeah, got, glad to be out here. Well, uh, let's talk about grain grading. If someone's bringing in a sample to an elevator, let's start with the basics, basics, basics. What's going to happen? Okay, well, you know, first they, get a, they pull a sample out of the truck and they want a good representative sample because you're going to use about a quart of wheat to determine about a 60,000 pound, you know, 36,000 to 60,000 pounds of wheat. Uh, they, they're they're going to have a moisture meter because they, they need to know what moisture goes in the bin because if they get too high moisture, they can't store it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to go out of condition on them. Okay. Uh, after they uh, do the moisture, then they're going to, to uh, determine the dockage, and they, they need either an MCI kicker or okay. they also have a Carter Day dockage machine sitting over here. That, that okay. some, both of these machines do an excellent job of, uh, of taking out the dockage okay. and measuring the dockage. Uh, after uh, they do that, then you need your digital scales. Sure. Uh, they'll either do the test weight with the moisture meter, and of course you always do the test weight with the moisture out. And if they don't do the test weight there, then they'll use a, 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 a fill hopper and cup okay. with a, a striker and do the test weight there. Okay. Sometimes they will need uh, hand pans with slotted sieves. But most generally, these machines take care of that. Take care of most of that. Okay, so right. these are the basic tools that you're going to see when you walk into your elevator and bring a sample. So I guess the next step is to let's go ahead and run a sample. Well, we got a uh, sample from a truck here that uh, we're fixing to grade. Uh, uh, what you, you know, what comes off the truck, you want to get the moisture on. That's the most important thing. You're going to do that before they even decide if they're going to take it. Right. right. Well, you got to you got to have the moisture on. What goes in the bin? Right. And because uh, you know the trash and everything is moisture, and that if it, you got too high moisture, even in the dockage, then it's going to make it go out of condition. What what number are you looking for here? Well, you're on the moisture. You really want it down to 11 and a half or less. Uh, if you start getting it in at 12 in the morning, by the evening it's going to average out to 11 somewhere. Okay. Uh, 11 and a half is about the highest moisture you want to storage. This is 12.6. It's going in a little wet, and you probably want to ship it pretty quick. Okay. Now you also might note that this says 58.8 pound test weight. Sure. It's got the dockage in, so that's underestimating test weight. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll take the sample out, we'll add it back in. Okay. Then we got to get the uh, sample weight. Weighs right at a thousand grams. And then we'll uh, we'll run the the dockage machine. All right, so this, what this is going to do is go through, clean the wheat, and separate all the trash and particles out of it. Right, you have the uh, aspirator on the top, and then uh, you got the riddle that takes off the big stuff. You have the clean wheat. Uh, this will either be shrunk and broken or dockage, and the bottom pan will be dockage. In other words, the real little stuff and the real big stuff on the top and the bottom, okay. and that's the dockage. Okay. Uh, if you've got a cheaty field, a lot of cheat, then that third pan down there will be full of cheat rather than small wheat kernels, okay. and it will also be dockage. All right, so it looks like we've pretty much done it here. Right, so uh, we'll empty the aspirator. We've got dockage. Okay. The bottom pan is dockage. And then the third pan is, in this case, shrunken and broken kernels. Okay. And we have the clean wheat. All right, so now it's all separated. Okay, so uh, on the uh, dockage, we got 1.5% dockage in this load. That, that means if you bring in, say, uh, a 50,000 pound load, uh, 150 of those pounds, uh, well, be 300 of those pounds, uh, will be uh, non-wheat material. And so they remove it from weight. Also, the discount schedule, since it's over 0.8%, mm -hmm. and you get up to about a point and a half, you can have up to a 25% discount on this load because of this dockage. Okay. Uh, you want to uh, uh, weigh out the, let me get another pan here, get rid of this dockage. You want to weigh out the shrunken and broken. Uh, okay. It's a, 
it's, a, it's about 0.8% shrunken and broken. You want to add that back into the sample before you do test weight. Okay, and why do you want to do that? Otherwise, you're going to, you're going to overestimate test weight. Okay. And then uh, we can either put it back in the moisture machine and do the test weight, but let's do it over here on the funnel and cup. Now, you know, you know use a, a uniform size there. And then you use the same square, scale, you zero it out. Okay. And pounds per bushel. And we have 59.1. Remember when we ran it over here, we had about 58.6. Sure. So right. we, with the dockage in, we underestimate the test weight if we don't take the dockage out. Okay. Now, what I've done is, is prior to running this sample, I pulled a 30-gram a 30, a 30 sample. And if you'll look at it, mm -hmm. you'll see that it has uh, rye in it. Right. And those yeah. are the darker kernels that we're going to see there. Yeah, that's the little pointy kernels. You know, you got the, the darker kernels here. Uh, that's the rye. And rye is foreign material. Okay. And there's a discount for that starting at 0.5%. This load happen, happens to have right at... Uh, 1% uh, rye in it. So, okay. so you're going to have about an 8 to 10% price discount because of the rye in there. Right. Uh, the rye is, doesn't come out with the, uh, the dockage. It, you've got to hand pick it. Okay. Now some locations, and what I like to do is take a shotgun shell yeah. so that I can get a sample out with about 100 kernels, dump it out, and then I can count the kernels of rye. Rye weighs a little less than, than wheat, so if I get 10 kernels of rye, I've got about 8% in there. If I get uh, 2 or 3 kernels, then I got 1% rye. It's okay. just quick and dirty. If a producer wants me to, then I'll hand pick it. It takes a little longer, but I'll hand pick it and calculate the actual percentage for it. Right, okay. Uh, and, that's, and that's important because it all goes into the final price of what they're going to get paid for. Right. The, the key to, to grading grain, the first thing you got to do is get a good representative sample. In other words, when they probe the truck, they need to, to get it from several probes. Then they need to bring it in. They need good equipment, which this location does, right. a nice clean workstation, and trained personnel. The only fair way to buy wheat is to grade it accurately. If you don't grade it accurately, you're going to reward the producers that deliver poor quality grain, and you're going to penalize the producers that bring in quality grain. Right. So the only fair way to grade it or to buy it is to grade it accurately. All right. Well, thanks for the lesson. Hopefully uh, this will come in handy for folks when they head down to their local elevator.